ladies and gentlemen, the director of the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium, Krista Gent. Hello. How you doing? Or should I say guten tag? My dad was actually <laughs> stationed in Germany, so, so I, okay. know, I know a little bit. Okay. That's, uh, is that good day? Yes. Good yes. day? Yeah. Okay. I took it in high school. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I know ich fasch nicht. Which, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's the only. That's what German you say to anyone. I, <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> yeah, but but like he like he's fluent in mm. that. That's the only two sentences that I ever picked up from spending time with him. Interesting. That's Interesting. a very complex language. It sure is. Yeah. yeah. People like to say it's uh, very unpleasant to listen to, but I disagree. It all depends on how you say it. The stereotypical version. Well, sure, right. I, I guess like everybody just thinks like all Germans sound like Hitler or something. Right. It's just <laughs> yeah. nine, nine, nine. <laughs> You're going to other <laughs> languages there. Yeah. Not, 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 <laughs> a, but not everybody sounds that way. Yes, yeah. but I'd say that like they have like what is it called A and M, like where it's like the soft stuff to listen ASMR. to. ASMR. ASMR. Yeah. I don't know A and M. I think that so I was you talking invented about something. I, I think I was talking about Texas University or something okay. like that. Do they have good? Soothing voices, their students? Probably not. Mm. Well, I don't know. Matthew McConaughey's kind of soothing. Well, is, he, is that where he is from? Yeah, he's from Texas. He was I, voted, I just saw recently, he was voted most beautiful person in his high school yearbook. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I, he, he, he's a beautiful man. <laughs> yes. And mm -hmm. I think he's like running, I think he's trying to get governor of Texas or okay, something like that. Going the Schwarzenegger route. Speaking all right, of all right, all right. Yeah. Vote for me, all right. <laughs> I mean, like, how is how are you not going to vote for that dude? Sure. I, uh, yeah, Matthew McConaughey. Like, let's let Tony the Tiger be governor of Kentucky. I mean, that's that's basically where we're going great. with this stuff nowadays. <laughs> but yes, yeah, Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. He that's German. Yeah, that's about as German as you can get. Mm -hmm. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> come to the science center. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great way to kick off this interview. <laughs> but we, we were, for the people that are out there listening, I, I'm dressed as an astronaut, mm -hmm. and Krista is, of course, the great Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. And we were yep. ta talking about how uh, nobody knew his last words because it was German, and the nurses weren't fluent in German. I think so he did it on purpose. Words. Probably. Yes. he. I, I could see him wanting to stay an enigma yeah. as he passes on. We're still thinking about him. Yeah. To be fair. And, and still, yeah. like, and still looking at his the stuff that he predicted, and it's all coming true nowadays. What a, that dude had to be an alien. I don't know. Depends what you mean by alien. Have I told you about the the um, Mars theory mm -mm. that we're Martians? Mm -mm. That there's um, the possibility that when everything Earth and Mars were younger. Um, there's an impact of Mars and some stuff got blown off, like chunks of Mars, and they f came to Earth. And that's actually what brought water and life. So maybe we are Martians. But what, what the, okay. <sighs> that's an interesting theory. Yeah. So the life that it brought, was it mm -hmm. just like, you know. Uh, yeah, like microbes. Uh, mi microbe. Little, yeah, little bacteria dudes. Hmm. That's an Maybe interesting theory. Were the Martians? That would make sense. Yep. Or a civilization that was already had something going, made its way here, and then just over time, catastrophic events happened and kind of had to start over. I've yeah. thought of that. Came here theory on purpose. Too. Yeah, it came here on purpose, and then. I mean, like we're trying to do now. Exactly. I mean, like, like it, it would it would make sense, you know, like if uh, your if your planet's running out of resources or whatever to inhabit one that already has resources, then let's say a comet hits or, mm -hmm. you know, super volcano or whatever, and then it's back to the Stone Age. Sure. Who knows? Yeah. I love to think of theories like that. Mm -hmm. My mind Our just doomsday. races. I respect it's, it. I And, you know, the, and we I think we talked about this last time, like, even though, yeah, if we're running out of resources, the idea of like, oh, let's just go find a, a new one. But like we can still fix, we can still help ours, yeah. and um, there there might be another ice age type period, or there will be. It won't be the entire planet covered in ice like the day after tomorrow kind of thing. But mm -hmm. Earth is good at fixing itself; it'll fix it whether we want it to or not. Yeah. And the 
you know, we had to find a place to go. That, Ew, that's a, well, that's the thought that I had. I, I went on a big hike uh, last week to the Red River Gorge, and you know, I just looked around at the earth, and I had that thought like, we don't stand a chance. You know, like, I mean, we think that, like, yeah, we're killing the planet and all that, but Yellowstone could blow off, and there ain't nothing we can do about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I think Mother Earth is going to have the final say-so. I saw also some, um, how there's solar flares, right? Yeah. Things that come off the sun every so often, and that's why we get aurora at the poles. It's mm-hmm. actually from particles of the sun when it has its little ejections. And those particles travel to Earth, hit our atmosphere, and create those colors, mm. the northern lights and everything. And they're different colors depending on what element of the atmosphere is getting excited. Yeah. And every so often, there's really big bursts. Like, very rare, but it, they've happened. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be one, another one. And when that happens, it could knock out internet. Oh, wow. At least overseas internet. Uh-huh. And... So what are we going to do when that happens? The world will go into mayhem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, well, they, they have <laughs> weapons of war nowadays that are like, based like electro bombs, and that's what they're designed for. Mm-hmm. Like, it, they, they go off, but not only is there an explosion, but somehow it knocks out uh, electricity within a so many thousand mile range. That sounds like a movie. That doesn't yeah, sound real. But it's a real thing that they have. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's... And I think that that's one reason that they invented something like that. It's like, well, why do you have to, you know, throw so many bombs where you can just throw one, knock out everybody's electricity, and send whatever country or place that is into just absolute mayhem? Mm -hmm. And if people don't think that that's a thing, last year people were fighting to the death over toilet paper. Okay? Imagine if somebody... What, remember when Facebook was wiped out like for like eight hours a, like, a few weeks ah, ago? Who, yeah. I, I, <laughs> imagine it, like your complete electrical grid. You don't have a – you plug in the heater at your house, it don't work. Right. And this is it, – it feels bananas to even talk about this because this it's not like it's – you know, we've had all of electricity forever. Yeah. And – you know, I I love going camping, which is, you know, and I've survived fine with <laughs> electricity. We used to, remember when we used to go to walk to your friend's house and knock on their door? Yeah. To see if your friend was home? Yeah. And now that's like the worst thing you could ever do. It's the most anxiety yeah. filled yeah, thing. If your friend was at home, you just had to go <laughs> back home. Yeah. You've called someone you hope no one picks up so you could just leave a voicemail and not talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very different. Very yeah. different now. And, and I'm mm-hmm. like you—you you would send the world into absolute mayhem, and like that's a real thing that they have. And, but like, the the future is scary. Don't get me wrong; it, it can mm-hmm. be very scary. But it, there's also some very fascinating things happening as well. Mm-hmm. Whenever it comes to the world, it's all about what you focus on. Yes, you know. Sure, like, it's very easy to only focus on the negatives, but there is a lot of positive. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a oh, whole lot sure. of positive. Yeah. I was uh, looking into the uh, Mars rover yes. uh, a few days ago, and this really surprised me. I was thinking, you know, like, you know NASA, they're really taking it serious. Probably all of their findings, naming them, uh, you know, stuff that would be suiting for that. But I seen like one that they had a picture of a, a rock that they called Butt Crack Rock. And I'm like, that, that's how serious they're taking this. Okay, NASA coined that term. Oh. Butt crack rock. Space people are very funny <laughs> with the way we need it. It's either unpronounceable Arabic, uh, like, um, rooted words. Yeah. Uh, exactly what they look like, the name of it. Yeah. You know, great red spot. We couldn't <laughs> really? Great red spot. Or they're funny. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's great. It's cool to see, like, like humanity and, and, and such. Like, you just think that everybody has, like, a chip on their shoulder and they're just, oh, do, 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 do. And, like, like uh, planets being named, like, E1117D or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, just butt crack rock. Like, yeah. They're just normal sure. people. They are. They but are. Ha- have you been uh, keeping up with that since we last talked about, like, the, the helicopter? Uh, what yeah, was... a bit. Uh, ingenuity. Ingenuity. Yeah, it's flown 14 times now. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think it was only supposed to go for a month, which just happens a lot. It's either yeah, but you know they plan for 
a, a doable amount of time, and they said, oh, it can keep going? Great. Go, yeah. Keep going. See what else? Yeah, I think this uh, it's, ain't it teaming up with the rover now. Well, it, yes. I, it's supposed to like go back to its landing spot, and right. then them two kind of team up and start doing projects together. Right, right. And then uh, the Perseverance rover is going to be able to start also focusing on the multitude of experiments and things that it's set for. Wow. But yeah, but I mean this this is this is really exciting. Yeah. So just. The, the fact that they weren't even sure if this helicopter was going to work. The atmosphere of Mars is 100 times thinner than Earth. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, it, it seems like, oh, you know, it's just a remote control drone. Like, what are you talking about? It, just like you would imagine here. But it's, there's so much less stuff yeah. for the helicopter to even use. So this is cool that it's flying and it's taking these, like, long little hops around. Um, and there's going to be an, uh, uh, the Dragonfly mission um that's going to which i forget where a moon and it's going to do that it's going to like hop hop mm. around um so this helicopter is kind of a precursor i guess to to getting this type of vehicle wow it's amazing yeah. to think about i mean like I, I just think that like something like this would have been a hundred years in the future you know right. i never thought that i would start seeing progress like this in my mm-hmm. lifetime but imagine 20 years from now Mm -hmm. what they're going to be doing yep how long do you think before we like before we take that leap of faith to mars to mars to Uh, people uh, yeah human yeah human people not the monkeys or the dogs like they've done i I mean definitely in our lifetime it'll happen uh i i guess i can't say i mean they've already started working more and more about seeing how you know people being in space for that long i think we mm-hmm. talked about that before just no one has been in space for two years straight yeah um they did just make their first space taco with space grown peppers i didn't hear was about just, that uh, yeah so what? they peppers that were fully from seeds fully grown in space and then they made tacos with them just like oh. a couple of days ago i think space taco <laughs> I wonder how they taste. What what food would you want to grow in space? Like fully space made meal. Oh man, that's a difficult one. <laughs> I would probably go the vegetable route because I think yeah. that would be the easiest way to go. Mm-hmm. Couldn't, well, I mean, well, you could probably make eggs because all you have to do is take a chicken hmm. out there. <laughs> that would be. Why can you? Is that well, possible? Hmm. Can you take a chicken to sweat? If they sure. might, no, no, done a monkey, why don't sure. they do that? Just get free eggs. It's hard to probably keep a chicken uh, happy and healthy, maybe. Plus, I don't you'd know. need, and you'd need a, no, I guess you wouldn't need a rooster. You only need a rooster for them to be yeah, you fertilized. Hmm. Now Na- that's, in, now that, now I'm getting weird, you know, <clears throat> interesting images of is there any issue with the egg coming out? being in free fall but you know I, well i mean if humans have to use the bathroom there shouldn't be no yeah air there's, there's, a, little, there's the... a little suction there's a tiny suction for the bathrooms really it's like a little funnel really and the, uh i remember uh reading so there's a really um good book oh i can't remember she she does different subjects Oh my gosh, I can't remember her name. I wonder how they. Um, but they, they, when you're an astronaut, they have them train uh, because the hole for the bathroom is very tiny. Yeah. And you have to aim, <laughs> and so just to test it out, like before the astronauts even go up into space, there's just like a, okay, sit and try to like line everything up, and most people think their hole is not where they think it is. So it's wow. really funny. I'm trying to figure out how to best. <laughs> Tell this story. I don't think there's really. I, I always Roach, have to go Mary into Roach. It. Mary Roach, I think, is her name. That's the one who wrote the book. Yes, and she has a couple of different books, and they're really good. Wow, yeah. I, I didn't know that was a thing. I wonder how they figured that out. Like, did the first astronauts go up there in like Houston? Uh, we we have we a have problem. A pro- <laughs> yeah, like a big problem, man. I I say one of these space tacos, and it is not coming out good. Yeah. Okay. Two problems. <laughs> we have a number one problem and a number two problem. I'm sure they thought about this uh, ahead of time. 
I would imagine. I would hope. Well, that's so. not, I, I was whenever I was looking into the uh, uh, Curiosity rover and uh, engine uh, perseverance, perseverance is a new rover, and then and Ingenuity is a helicopter. Ingenuity. And Curiosity for, is still it's up there. But for some reason, yeah. I was just having a problem with the uh, Ingenuity. That's but okay. whenever I was uh, looking into Ingenuity, it's amazing mm-hmm. how much thought they did put into that. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're right now preparing for a seasons change there on Mars. Yeah, it's very similar to ours. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. but it, it's just crazy that like they think that far ahead. You know, oh, like, yeah. they're they're planning a lifetime mm-hmm. for this thing, mm-hmm. and just it, it really it's just amazing to think how much thought and planning and time go. Well, I mean, if if, if you're doing an eighty million dollar right. project, yeah, you better put some thought into right. it. Right? Not it's we can't just go out there and fix it. Yeah, that's not that's not how that works. Yeah, but one day maybe. Well, I don't. I guess that uh, all that happened with uh, Jeff Bezos and Richard uh, Bronson, Branson, Branson. How you say, Branson. Branson. All that happened uh, after last time me and you talked. Was that? I think it was. What? Well, oh, how, how they like their went launches in, and stuff. Yeah, their launches. Stuff has happened. Yeah, I don't know if they. Um, what did you think about all that? Did it's cool. It's great. I you know I've really come around. It's it's not my area of excitement. Um, yeah. I'm not against commercial space flight, um, and the the Virgin Galactic stuff is right now geared towards research mostly, which mm-hmm. is, you know, also yeah, great. Yeah, I like the way Richard's going about uh, it. Yeah. Um, just to me, that's not what we should be focusing on. I, but but again, space to me is just about us learning. I've mm-hmm. never been super pushy about us going and living somewhere else or us going and using these places for us to like a tourist attraction yeah yeah yeah. but um i think there are ways to do that that don't harm the planets you know Mm -hmm. if I just, I've, you know, always had these ideas of like, well, you know, how, w- there's stuff we don't know. What if every time we land and take off of this other planet, we're like changing their orbit a little bit? And what if we do so much damage that it like knocks it out of its normal orbit? Mm. Which I don't think that is possible, but it's a thought that I've had, especially if it's a smaller thing like the moon. Yeah. Um, they did, did they launch DART yet? I think that's this month. The they're doing a test launch for you like this. Um, so back with the dinosaurs, there was a whole impact yeah. of the asteroid or the comet, or you know we're not completely sure. Yeah. And the big question is, what if that happens again? Right. Yeah. Um, so we don't really have a solution. There's not a great solution. Like, for I, what I if seen, that's happening? I've seen one like, where they just like shoot a laser at it, and that's it, one but, idea. But, but even then, I mean, like, it, it's you're going to burst a rock, and then you don't you don't have to worry now about just one rock. Little ones. There's going yeah, yeah, millions of tiny ones yes. that are on fire. Yeah. So the idea of blowing it up is hasn't been the route. Yeah. Um. So one of the ideas, and that's actually going to be tested. I'm pretty sure it's this month. Um. They're going to launch. They're testing it on. It's a pair of asteroids, so they're small. It's a double asteroid. And they're going to launch this little tiny thing up, and it's going to just knock into one of the asteroids to try and just knock it off its course enough to see if we can change its path, its trajectory. Hmm. So we're te- this is our first, like, Earth protection right. test <laughs> mission. We're playing defense. We yeah. are, yeah. So to see if that even works, so then we wow. have something... Yeah, that's a much better way to go about it. Yeah, but I just a controlled. But like, crash. How, how do you like? I guess control exactly how fast. <laughs> how, how do you know how much speed you get to not make it explode to just knock it off course? Mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's smart people out there that can fully understand that. Yeah, you can figure out just from the mass of the object and the mass of our little tiny guy how fast you need to go to change the speed even to just slow it down wow. you yeah it's all math it's all math angles and <sighs> physics there are some yeah. amazing people that are working <laughs> at nasa and all yeah. these other um, programs and it's kind of cool they're just their job is to just watch forth 
things heading towards Earth. That's that's someone's job. Because it's it is, it, it, it yep. is a real possibility. Yep. And it it also like. I just found this out a few months ago. I think after the last time me and you talked, actually, about how NASA is also involved with Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. It's almost like, you know, any natural disaster that can occur, it's, that's NASA's yeah. job. I, I didn't know that they were that involved with, you know, apocalypse-type scenarios. NASA has a lot of Earth-based feature. I don't know if features is right, but... You know they're yeah. not they're not just far away space. They're also you know looking at geology and stuff. And they're yeah. partnered with that. Yeah. Yeah, I had no Earth idea is part they of were space. that involved. Yeah. Did you have you heard <laughs> their uh, idea though for Yellowstone? I don't think so. They're, they wanted well. This is they're not going to do this. It's just an idea, but it's a terrifying one. They're sp- they want to drill like a ten mile hole down into Yellowstone and pump a lot of water mm-hmm. into it. In hopes to cool it down okay. so that it doesn't erupt. Hmm. I just think that we shouldn't just not mess with Yellowstone. Hmm. Like, let's just mm-hmm. let's, let's leave it be. Let sleeping dogs lie. Exactly. But yeah. I don't like, I mean, imagine that being your job responsibility, though, to like stop this volcano from. <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how are you supposed to go about that? Right. That's a crazy job to have. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the t- right scenario. I mean, maybe they, they, they're obviously a lot smarter than I am with that scenario, but mm. a crazy thing to have to deal with. Yeah. Because that's all just pressure, pressure yeah. building up. And I think they are fairly good at predicting. I, I think it's still unpredictable for mm-hmm. sure, but I think they're fairly good at sensing when something might be about to happen. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if we could prevent a giant volcano from, you know, erupting and burying millions of houses and land and people, yeah. and that's I mean, that's a good thing. But then that gets into like, should we mess with what Earth is doing? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They they found like soil samples from that area, I mm-hmm. think, in Tennessee from mm-hmm. its last eruption. Mm-hmm. So I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's. I just that, I just that, registered what you said. That's the other side of the yeah. United States. Yes. Like, yes. I'm, well, I mean, Pompeii is a great example. Right. The the ash and volcanic, well, the volcanic ash and particles mm-hmm. went so far into the atmosphere just with little Pompeii mm-hmm. that it put the us into a little ice age for like, I forget how many decades it was or how long it was mm-hmm. exactly, but it created many well, ice age as well. That's what the dinosaurs issue was. It wasn't the impact itself. It was the debris up in the air that killed all the plants that took away and cooled the temperatures. Yeah. But I think a lot of it was the plants died and then the things that ate the plants died and then the dinosaurs didn't have any, so. Yeah. yeah. It's just a snowball effect of extinction. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's it's crazy out there that like that's that's yeah. I'll, this is such a happy podcast. Germany, the end of the world, yay! <laughs> but it's just so crazy I'm never out there. Never gonna that, be like, invited back. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I think it's it's no. important for like people to like <laughs> just know that like, hey, life is so crazy. Like, so many people just don't stop and think about it. Mm. I think. Like, we are on a big rock that is just floating in space in an orbit around this giant fireball. And we have another big rock beside of us Mm -hmm. that that controls our gravity and the oceans. And, like, it just, it, 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 my mind explodes thinking just how crazy Mm -hmm. this life is. And hopefully somebody out there will start thinking about that, too, and realize, like, hey, maybe we need to start taking better care of the Earth. Sure. Like, you know, this isn't going to last forever. What's some of the problems that are going on? What can I do to help? Right. People need to start thinking about stuff yeah. like that. It's not all ice cream cones and teddy bears. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, life is real. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and to say, you know, the other side that we didn't get to because i think we like to focus on the the doomsday to use that word again (laughs) aspect of everything but but also science because we're thinking about these things has gotten a lot better at predicting when something's going to happen or if stuff gets knocked into the air how to remove it you know we we need to think about 
the cause and effect of different things in order to think about how can we help that or prevent it. So yes, there's all these things that have happened or that could happen, but that's also how we get to better this. Yeah. <laughs> That wasn't a good end to that. <laughs> but, but, but do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. It, but it also, like, it could help people realize, too, just how important uh, organizations like NASA are and the people right. that are involved are. Because, right. like uh, you just said earlier, people think, like, oh, that's the, the moon people. That's the people that go to moon. But, no, like, no, that, that they do a lot of stuff here mm-hmm. on Earth. Mm-hmm. And it, it breaks my heart how that is – still such a low funded program yep. within our government mm-hmm. like Elon Musk a dude that you know Elon Musk is doing more with SpaceX mm-hmm. than NASA is able to all because of government yep. funding and that's that mm-hmm. is just mind blowing mm-hmm. to me but he's at least he's working with them yeah. on things that's at least a, a plus but exactly it's we NASA has to pick and choose, and it's even I would say probably even worse with Earth based, you know, the USGS and EPA, every, you know, all these things trying to help or keep the Earth as great as it is. Yeah, it's even harder, you know, because it's not as exciting. Yeah, almost. And, and, and I, yeah, I can see some politicians being that way, like they want to be the one to go to Mars more than, you know, fix a problem right. here on it's Earth. It's the space race all over again kind of thing. Yeah, you know? and it's just, uh, it's easy to think of a plan B. But like you said earlier, when you start focusing on what's going on here on Earth, I, you know, I, I know that he's crazy and all, but I love that Elon Musk guy. He, the, the other day, uh, somebody from the U.N., was uh, talking about world hunger oh, and stuff and was saying, mm-hmm. like, oh, all we need is $6 billion, and that can solve, like, all of these hunger problems. Mm-hmm. And, he, of course, everything happens on Twitter for some reason. Nobody can just That's meet and place. have— the place. Seems to be the place. It's so stupid. Yeah. Just meet and—we <laughs> have Zoom at least. But still, like, he tweeted You're that. You're on mute. <laughs> it's, it is crazy. But Twitter is the place to be for yeah. all of the important world decisions sure. to happen. Well, they're busy. You know, they got to— <laughs> Just send a tweet, tweet out. Tweet it out, yep. But he, like, tweeted Elon Musk talking about how $6 billion can help so much of world hunger or whatever. And Elon Musk says— Show me how that money is going to spent. How, show me how that money is going to be spent. Make it public to where others can look at it too. The funding mm-hmm. process of it, and the money's yours. Yeah, I love that attitude. Right. Like, let's make it public. Let's make everybody yeah, because, involved. And yeah, you the money's yours. Yeah. You got it. And if there's an issue with that, why is there an issue with it? You know. Exactly. So. He has yeah. that. He seems like he's one of the last billionaires to have an actual conscience Hmm. somewhat he still makes flamethrowers don't get me wrong but like he he seems like he has he still has a little bit of human Mm. left in him Mm. a little bit it's dark but like it's 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 really hard to any any person in the public eye like this it's so hard because i don't know them it's so hard no one's going to be perfect in that you know we're all human so any any weird thing that's said, I mean, it's and it's one thing if something is bad, but if you just say something like weird or odd, yeah. when you're that looked at and focused on and famous, it's going to be like, whoa, what? <laughs> yeah. Versus just me saying something weird and then no one hears it and it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I just trust Elon Musk 10 times more than I would Jeff Bezos. Hmm. Like... I guess it's just the bald head. I don't know. Like, like he looks like Lex Luger a little bit. I grew up watching Superman. Mm-hmm. Like, he just and his laugh. He's got a like he's got a super villain laugh. Hmm. And even mm. his even his rocket looked like the one out of Austin Powers. And people already know those jokes. But I like it's just I don't know, you know. And like it seemed like that was more for his own personal benefit. Mm. At least with Elon, he seems like he's trying to do some good. Mm-hmm. But, you know, who knows? He could be going to Bohemian Grove with all the other no, rich millionaires and all them people, too. But it's just crazy, though, that that guy right there is doing more than NASA. And people need to realize, like, hey, that's a problem. Mm. Like, let's fo- I, I, let's pay a little bit more attention to a program that truly matters, that's trying to do mm-hmm. some good stuff. And realize, like, hey, life is crazy 
this earth is going to last forever unless we start taking care of it. Right. Or keep keep, keep taking care of it. Yeah. More. I mean, uh, I don't want to I don't want to dampen all of those listeners and all those people who have been doing a lot. Yeah. But there's little things that and to be fair, big people like maybe not necessarily Elon Musk, but like big companies and people are the ones that need to be hearing this. Yeah. Well, the factories not, yeah. and Yeah. The big old private jets and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. I think that ho- hopefully we Cruises. figured out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, did, did you see last year, <clears throat> I think it was uh, India, a, a city in India, where uh, Mount Everest, I think it was Mount Everest. I'm talking out of my butt so much in this. But there, I, think the, it, I think it was Paul. Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. Or, Nepal? Maybe. But, but it was visible for the first time in, like, so many decades no. because the smog from the city disappeared because the factories had to be shut down because of COVID. Right. That's telling. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just like, like, I just wanted to sh- look, like, look at some people and be like, eh, <laughs> see? <laughs> look at this giant mountain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and, the, well, there's been a lot that. of climate workshops happening and dates being thrown around and, you know, different countries trying to be realistic about when to cut their carbon emissions and how, by how much. And some people are saying we've already passed the point, but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean we shouldn't try to slow it down or, you know, yeah, do better. Yeah, here it is. Uh, people in India can see the Himalayans for the first hmm. time in decades. So it wow. was the Himalayans. Yeah. The first time in 30 years mm-hmm. because of the air pollution mm-hmm. in that area. Yeah, and like you see, like a city like Los Angeles, people right. like took pictures of that, mm-hmm. and just oh, like you you realize like yeah. how much we're doing, and I, but it's it's cool that uh, we're finally having the conversations on how exactly we can combat sure. problems right. like this. Yeah, like we were saying earlier, it's easy to focus on all the bad stuff, mm-hmm. but you got to realize there's a lot of people doing a lot of good as mm-hmm. well. And to anybody out there listening, you can be a part of that as yes. well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any li- I know it sounds silly, but like literally any little thing, because even if it's just about building your habits, that's it still does a lot. It might not feel like it. And I've I've, you know, asked this question before to climate change enthusiasts and people who study it and everything. Like, do you ever get overwhelmed? Feeling mm. just like there's so much that needs to be done, and how am I gonna do anything? And they said, "Yeah, of course, yeah." But you can't focus on that. You just have to focus on this, what you can do, and yeah. just go with that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really easy to get overwhelmed, <laughs> and, and you know, I, I, and I'm not smart enough to know what the magic pill is or what exactly it's going well, to take. There isn't one. Yeah, exactly. But I just don't know if paper straws are the answer. Them things, I, yeah. u- I used them for the first time a few weeks ago, and I was like, oh. They dissolve. This, yep. Yeah, this is awful. I do have, I have stainless steel ones and silicone ones, and those are, I like those. I recommend those. Yeah. I paper got, ones just go. I got yep. the stainless steel yeah. right, right afterwards. Yeah. I, I haven't tried the uh, the other one. What did you say? Silicone, silicone. ones. Yeah, because in winter, the this, this stainless steel ones can get kind of frozen, and then you'll get a <laughs> Christmas story situation where your tongue gets sucked <laughs> I don't want to do that. That's one of the Coca Cola. That's all I wanted. I didn't, didn't think of that. I, I'm, I, I, might, I might try to. Maybe I go shouldn't have said other. anything and then go. I don't know if I could do my job then. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm glad now yep. that we have this conversation. Mm-hmm. But really, I mean, like, like you said, though, just the baby <laughs> steps like that. Right. You ain't got to do a lot. You, I mean, you can just do a little bit. And if everybody does a little bit, it equals out mm-hmm. to. It's also just getting people all in the same mindset to all of us understanding what the earth needs and what the earth does and what things are affecting it for us all to, you know, we're, we're a democracy. We can enact change or request change. You know, we can have these, these conversations to see, okay, what, what does our country need to be doing and what does the world need to be doing? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's all, I don't know if I have like a very grassroots mindset to it but you know we're we're a part of the earth so by saying that we need to take care of the earth that's us too yeah. because we're a part of it we're impacted by pollution and stuff too we want to 
stay healthy and, and everything. You know, instead of going to the, like, okay, how can we change our genetics to combat getting these diseases? Well, what if we look at why these diseases are happening mm-hmm. and try to stop that instead? You know, yeah, huh, that's you know a beautiful I mean? way to look at you know what it. I'm saying, yeah, I, I like that. Very, <laughs> very well said. It, it, it's just it, it, it's the little steps, you know. Yeah, and, and also just one small step for you're not you're in the astronaut what, outfit. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, who knows what the the future is going to consist of, but. It, it can be terrifying, but it can also be exciting. And it's all how you look at it. Yeah. So, the East Kentucky Science Center Planetarium. <laughs> hey, opening t- tomorrow. This will be released the day before, so opening Woo! tomorrow. Yeah. Are, are you excited? I am so excited. All, all of us are really happy to see people back in the building. <laughs> how, how long has it been shut down for? It's been it was, quite a while. Yeah, it was before I arrived um, earlier in the year, I think around March. So that sounds I right. I remember. That yeah. sounds right. Um, there, it was open for a few months and then it had to close right back down again, which, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long yeah. time. So the, the Halloween event, if, you know, those people who came out for it, it was awesome yeah we, what, what all would what all did uh that consist of so we it's we had over 500 people come Dang. which is amazing yeah it was incredible nice. so awesome to see so many people we did the fright night laser show yeah. and then we had um different activities um you could make your own uh witcher wizard familiar um we had um investigating pumpkins so like guessing how much they weigh, like will it sink or float and then you could test out your predictions we had a uh, dancing gummy worms there was a box of mysteries where you had to stick your hand whoa, in whoa, 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 whoa. dancing gummy worms. how do gummy worms <laughs> dance oh you soak them in baking soda water and then you drop them in vinegar and they go for real yeah can you still and if you're them? lucky they float and then they sink back down again and then they float and they sink back down again can you still eat them after all that uh, they probably wouldn't taste very good <laughs> I'd still try it, but a- a- anyways, uh, what what else? Uh, that just that that one really caught me it's right there. Gummy worms. <laughs> I love gummy worms. I love gummy everything's. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I want yep. one of the huge uh, bears that they have. It's like forty dollars, sure. but they're like two pounds or something yes. like that. Have you ever just left a bag in the sun and they all melted together and you just have a block? No. Uh, okay. That's a genius idea, though. I need more friends like you in my life. <laughs> You got the idea. The best science happens by accident. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, what else did y'all do there on the Friday night? Um, there was a box of mysteries. Um, so you had to put your hand in and guess what you were feeling. Um, oh God! And if you didn't hear, I'll reveal them right now. Okay. What the items were? I should have brought them and made you do it. Well, you you didn't. <laughs> well, did, did they know after they got it? I think who was doing the activity told some. Okay. But I don't. I don't know if that happened for everyone. So, uh, one of the objects was styrofoam peanuts. Um, one okay. of the boxes had a model human skull head. Wait, like oh, model. Model. Okay, model. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's possible Keyword to get it. Right there, model. All right. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> um, very realistic. Though. Um, there was a plant, like a spiky kind of plant. Okay. Um. And there was a bucket of pumpkin guts. That was the, oh, the mysterious one. Yeah, I, I hate that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. But um, very cool, though. Yeah. And then, oh, and there was a, you, you could make a bloody handprint with a specific shade of paper that reacts with, um, I think it's baking soda, uh, water. The baking soda, the base, reacts with the dye in the paper, and it turns red. So you could make like a red handprint on the paper. That's cool. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. It was. We had a really good turnout. Um. And it it was just awesome seeing people at the science center again. That's that is mm-hmm. wicked. Yeah. See, that's why I, I I love the science center so much. Like I, I'll be honest, I've probably learned more at the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium than I ever did in science class in high school. They just like I don't know, like it just wasn't as fun. We didn't do bloody handprints. <laughs> we, 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 we didn't do anything. We didn't have dancing gummy worms. I, I, I think that like whenever you make science 
fun, mm-hmm. then it really gets the gears going. Right. Not not just for young folks. I'm sitting here. I'm 25 oh, sure. years old, and I want to do dancing gummy worms sure. now. Yep. I think that everybody's a kid at heart if you get them in, <laughs> in, in the right space. But mm-hmm. if you make science fun, then you get people interested. Yes. You can't yeah, just sit, you can't sit there and preach to them and give them a big quiz and just make them watch videos. No, mm-hmm. make it fun. Mm-hmm. It, it's a very fun thing to do, a yep. very fun field. That's why I got into it because uh, I used to teach in the classroom, and it's it's very different. Um, and the teaching part's what I loved, but the it's hard. I mean, being a te- classroom teacher is hard. Yeah, There's a lot that you have to follow and uh, achieve. and But that's, to be honest, that's what I want the Science Center to help with. Um, all you know, if there's any teachers listening, that's that's what I want us to do for you. We want to take some of that stuff that you have to do and help you with it. Mm. If that makes sense, you that's know. Cool. So yeah, so we'll be open Tuesday through Saturday. Nice. Um, Tuesday to Friday, the mornings are are set for school groups, and then from one to four, Tuesday to Friday will be open for the public come on in we'll have a show in the planetarium every hour okay um at one two and three did it that way so it's easy to remember (laughs) nice nice um and then on saturdays we'll be um same thing we'll have a show at one two and three um we've been from noon to four on saturdays I'm glad that y'all are doing Saturdays as well, yeah. because like, for some people, you know, it, it is difficult to get there in the mm-hmm. middle of the week and stuff like that. So it's mm-hmm. I think it's so important and great that y'all are doing it on Saturday yeah. as well, because mm-hmm. like people like me that have to work, unfortunately, I'm going to be there on Saturday. Sorry. No, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's all good. And, and, and some people are lucky enough to get a Monday and Tuesday <laughs> off and well, a Tuesday and Wednesday off right. and then they can come down there and hang right. out. Yes. What all is uh, going to be different with the uh, East Kentucky Science Center? Yeah, so we're actually, I'm glad you asked that, because on Fridays, I'm actually going to start testing out a new kind of show in the planetarium where it's going to be me or one of our other educators just being there live and taking you, and I think I talked about this a little bit when we talked last time, but, um, you know, for example, one month might be the solar system and we'll I'll actually take you on our digital planetarium system on a tour flying from planet to planet to planet like zooming up to the surface looking at different features on it and yeah. talking about the cool things about each planet and moons and and different things like that so I'm actually going to try that out the 1 p.m. show on Fridays um to see what everyone thinks do you like this format I'm really excited cool. um and if you're there in person and, you know, you have questions, I'll be there to talk to you about them. If you want to see something else, let's go see it. You know, I, I want this to be um, interactive. I want you to tell me what do you want to see or what do you yeah. think? What are you thinking about? You know, so we're going to test that out. And if we seem to like it, then we'll start offering that uh, probably in the weekends, too. But very cool. Um, there's that. And then I'm also we're going to be starting doing little um, demos and experiments uh, at certain times during the day just out in our exhibit hall. So mm-hmm. little little experience. We might bring out one of our animals to talk about it. Um, we might do an experiment like the dancing gummy worms. Who knows? <laughs> like yeah. that, those kind of I things. I want to see that. We'll do little little tiny demos with, with whoever's there and wants to come up and, you know, talk to the educator and learn about some topic. Hmm. So we'll start doing that yeah. um, just out in the exhibit hall at – at different times throughout the day um and we're working on some new programs too so um in the future we'll have uh the opportunity for you to sponsor one of our pets in the science center i don't know if pets was the right word one of our uh Animals co-workers, or, or <laughs> co- co-workers, co- co-workers are a better term because I mean they're putting in the work too. You know they they're, sure they're showing are. off. They are. Um, yeah. So we, of course, at the science center, want our animals to be as happy and enriched and healthy as we can be. So letting the community kind of become a part of that. Um, we're going to have different levels where you can sponsor them and kind of be an adoptee um, yeah. for a specific time period. Um, you can give this as a gift if you want, you know, 
one of your friends cool. to kind of do that and it. and you know you can get special things like little video check-ins of the animal you can have your name displayed you can come have special visits this is all That's like we're cool. kind of developing this little program where to bring the community is part of the museum as part of the science center and yeah yeah that is so. very cool. <laughs> I, I think that that's such a unique uh, take that y'all are doing with the animals that yeah. y'all have there. And, you know, I, I think a majority of this area are all very animal-loving people. And I, I'm, I'm definitely going to be a part of that. Yeah. What, what, all, what all animals are going to be involved with the uh, Science Center? Yeah, so right now we have a group of hissing cockroaches, which I call the Waltons. We have um, Shelly, the marine turtle. There is Merle, the uh, terrapin, the box turtle, which I call him Merle because he is always tired, so he's haggard, so I call him Merle. That's, like, haggard, that's, so. that's, that's a good name. That's, that's yeah. suiting. Yeah. Um, there is <laughs> Sandy, a desert iguana, like a little, basically a little lizard that yeah. super fast. Yeah. Um, we have Fidget, the chinchilla, uh, Miss Piggy, the guinea pig, uh, there is Draco, the bearded dragon, and then uh, Seymour, the blue-tongued skink. So we got a lot. We cool. got a good, good little troop. Wow, you got, I mean, you got like a yeah. miniature zoo. We do. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see the guinea pig. That is yeah. one of the cutest animals on earth. She oh. is amazing. She loves to talk, especially when you have food. <laughs> I, I would say so. Yeah. I yeah. would say so. And is is the dinosaur poop going to be there? It w it will be. Yes. yes. That is like one of my favorite things to tell people yep. about the science center. I'm like, listen, they have real dinosaur yes. poop. Yes, we'll have it. we'll have plenty of things that you can touch, um, and I might put them out on the table and not tell you which one's the dinosaur poop. Maybe you have to guess <laughs> guess which one it is. <laughs> uh, it, it really is an amazing an amazing place. I think it had to be 2019. I keep forgetting how crazy the year 2020 was. No, but yep. the, uh, the the space rocks that they had right. down there, mm -hmm. that was an amazing experience mm -hmm. for like to give people the chance to hold actual moon rock samples right. from the actual moon. Yep. That it's it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, doesn't it seem real. No, it, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Like like even whenever I was holding them, I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm like, ah, are you sure? You, you didn't? Like, I was like, yeah. you didn't just get this out of the creek or something like that. But I I, I trust them. I trust them. And and two, like that's another thing that I love is any questions that anybody has, mm -hmm. you are there to thoroughly explain it. Mm -hmm. I probably talked Steve Russo's ear off with a million questions, but I'm thankful to have that opportunity with people like you now. That uh, if I have any questions, I I can ask it. That's uh, one thing that I've always hated about watching a YouTube video mm. is like I won't understand it. And <laughs> picturing I, you yelling at the computer, <laughs> answer me! me! <laughs> and, and do not go to the comment section <laughs> on any of these videos oh, to, yeah. to see sure, help. Sure, sure. You're not yeah. going to get help. Yeah. But with the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium, people like Chris Gent will be there to help you with anything that you need and offer once in a lifetime experiences. Like, you know, the moon rocks and all the other exciting things that y'all are going to be doing in the future. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm so Yay. thankful that somebody like you and the rest of the team is here in East Kentucky to help dumb people like me understand all what of this smart stuff. <laughs> but really, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited. So uh, once again, to anybody that wants to uh, see more and learn more, how do they do that? Yep. So you can go to our Facebook page, East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium. Uh, we also have an Instagram. Um, you can find all our contact there, phone number, email, everything like that. And really hope to, to see you. <laughs> Krista, thanks for everything. Thank you.